morning, welcome to today's video. You wanted more Bike Fit Tuesdays? Here you go. What the flip is going on here? Hot woman in my, in my studio. Fuck, I mean, like, this is like really, um, this is a bit weird, actually. Right, Lou, what are we doing today? Bike fit. But you've already had a bike fit. Another bike fit. A James bike fit. I don't think we've ever shown your bike properly on camera. No, maybe not. It's pink. It's very pink. Actually, more pink than I thought it would be. That's actually a good colour pink. Mm -hmm. Is your number 22 going to be pink? No. Why not? Because I'm a boy and you have to oh, ride Jenna, really, no, 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 no. really fast. <laughs> No, no, no. As a bloke, you have to ride really fast to get away with riding a pink bike. And you don't ride fast? Not anymore, I don't. No, I don't, no, no. I don't even ride a bike anymore. Did you ever ride? I'm one? too busy. It's another fit where we're going to have the smallest settings of the <laughs> Well, the handlebars are the right height, please. What are you doing? Pedaling, just keep pedaling, just keep pedaling. Uh, it's a bit too high at the front. It's a bit too high at the front. Yeah. Oh, we've maxed out. Oh, man. My, my motion capture system tells me that your saddle is too low. I've seen loads of people riding this position at Hillingdon. Yeah, and I think, yeah. <laughs> see in this is that you extend your left leg more than you do your right. Begs the question why. You point your toes more, so we've got 130, 130, sorry, 147 degrees of extension in the left leg, 143 in the right, 20 degrees of plantar flexion in the right leg, in the right foot, um, 33 degrees of plantar flexion in the left foot. But begs the question why. I'll tell you why. Uh, probably because you sit off to the right hand side as most people do when the saddle sets too high. About there, see this left dot's close to the line the right mm -hmm. dot is? Yeah. We can back this up in a couple of different ways. One, with how you're feeling. You feel as though you engage with the left side of the saddle more than the right. Mm -hmm. um, I can back that up because that's exactly what happens. More pressure on the left side of the, of the saddle than there is on the right. Mm -hmm. So, not, not a huge amount more, but there's, there's definitely this hot spot. Uh, and this also has an impact on knee tracking as well. So, if you look at right knee comes in quite a lot versus your left knee comes out, see that? Right knee's coming in. Left knee's coming out, mm -hmm. yeah? Now, the analogy for this, if you think about it like this, if you're sat off to the right-hand side, look what I have to do just to simulate it, right. right? So, if the viewers are watching, if you brush the top tube with your right knee, it's very likely it sells too high. Most people sit off to the right-hand side because they're right-side dominant, right with the right hand, kick the football with the right foot, whatever. Referencing this, this imbalance in leg extension, it's a sacrificial act of sacrificing the left leg for the right. So what's that thing in her shoe? So Louise has got a leg length stack um, in a left shoe. She doesn't have a leg length discrepancy. My theory is that the previous fit um, ended up with the saddle being a little bit too high. So we've got the, the typical uh, symptom of sitting off to one side and hyperextending the left leg. So I Which I tried to counteract with a with leg, leg, leg stack. <laughs> it's not, this isn't about being dismissive about fitters, it's just about, it's about educating people. If you've got a fitter that basically says to you, well, my system says this is right, that should, that should be a red flag, generally speaking. I've had a couple of people who've come through to me who have had fits. They've been in pain and gone back to their fitter and the fitter has been quite dismissive of it. I mean, your fitter should want to be able to cure, should want to cure your problems for you frankly, free of charge. Okay. Anybody that comes in for a fit with me and has issues afterwards, I will continue to treat them free of charge on the proviso that they've made all the necessary changes to their bike. So if someone comes into me and they've got ill-fitting shoes, a bike that's too big, and they're still having issues and they haven't changed those things, it, well, I'm sorry, I'm a bike fitter. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a wizard, despite the beard. James, is that sweet corn on the floor over there? What? Fuck's sake. <laughs> I thought I cleaned it all up. No! <laughs> what the heck? What's going on? Look, there's loads over there. You need to hire a cleaner, mate. Saddle height reduction. I've just done it to just get you a bit more stable. And look at the ramifications it's had in the saddle. So, pressure distribution has improved from left to right. These numbers are micro bars, they're barometric pressure. I mean, to be honest with you, the difference between 596 and 518 is fairly negligible anyway, but there is a, is, there's a much better balance of pressure distribution from left to right here now. 
Um, equally, this line, which represents our center of pressure, it basically determines how much the pelvis is moving and also where the lines show the pressure is being distributed. In this case, it's actually moving slightly less because the line is diminished in size. All right? So what this is telling us is, with lowered your saddle height, your pelvic stability has improved. So lower back pain, less likely to occur. Does it feel any different? Yes. It probably feels too low. It feels low. What's changed here? I've got a lady's saddle. <laughs> Well, there's no such thing as a lady's saddle, really, is there? Is that is it a women's saddle? It is uh, okay. marketed as a women's saddle. There's no such thing as a women's saddle. Women's pelvises are different for obvious reasons, but they're not that different when it comes to selecting saddles. I mean, I think, so I'm getting really good results with these. So Urban SR, which is supposedly a women's saddle, but uh, I'm selling them to men. A bit of black marker and cover the women up. Feels pretty comfortable. Yeah. So James has made quite a few changes now, but still not happy, are you? No. Uh, there's still there's still room for improvement. Is that from Lake? <laughs> oh, oh, I love these. Yes. How many watts? Who's uh, gonna slam my stem? No. Who are you? Mate, I thought slamming stems was bad. No, slamming stems is good. Slamming stems just because it looks good is just stupid. Here's what I tend to find: is that people run saddle too high which pitches them into the front of the bike. And what they do is they have to bring the front end up comparatively in order to offset the weight on the hands. If you actually lower the saddle height so you can reach through the bottom of the stroke, you don't end up being pitched into the front of the bike so you can lower the front end accordingly. So all I've done with Louise is I've actually just lowered a 20 mil onto the bike because she's no longer having to excessively point the toes with the bottom of the stroke. If you think about how a bike is designed, it's designed with the intent that they don't design bikes with spaces under the steps. They design it with no spaces. Mm -hmm. The spaces are only there so you can custom tune the bike based on the fact that there is a massive spectrum of, of shapes and sizes for human beings. Whereas the bicycle only comes in, what, five, six sizes? So if you're gonna uh, design a custom frame, for example, your number 22, you're gonna design that so it doesn't have any spaces at all? Correct, yeah. So no. it rides the best it possibly yeah. can? My, my Autumn doesn't have any spaces in it either. Um, it doesn't need them. Ride that across America, no discomfort whatsoever. Except for the nearly dying. And the except Denny's. for the dying, but that wasn't really the bike's fault. And Denny's, well, that's Denny's fault. I got a donut. Or even better. Or a donut. Oh, you actually. Yeah. <laughs> looks so much better. It does look better. I think, you know, it's, there's, there's still work to be done. Uh, we've brought a clear location dramatically further back. Thankfully, Louise is riding speed plates, so we can use the four aft extender plate to get uh, the cleat 20 mil further back, which will improve stability because the but the way it was at the moment, the cleat, the center of the, of the pedal axle was aligned directly underneath the ball of my foot, which is what a lot of the guff that you read online tells you to do, actually done where it worked really destabilizes the foot. We've wound the reach down, inline seat post, slam the stem. Is there any downsides to having your cleats really far back? If you have the cleat really far back, what it can do is it, may, it can make you spill into the front of the shoe, so you end up driving into the front of the shoe quite a lot. But it's really popular in kind of endurance circles. So riders doing transcontinental, ram, that, that kind of stuff, because it offloads the calf muscles. So you don't, your calf muscles don't have to activate quite so much. You don't need that snap for accelerating either. Totally. And yeah. you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of talk about running the cleat further forward to improve acceleration, and that's absolutely true, but I'd never do it at the expense of subtalar stability, the stability of the foot. Uh, and considering most of my clients have shit feet. Not just most of your clients, it's most people in the world. Most people are just, have because, bad feet. Because yes. we lead sedentary lifestyles. We don't we don't we don't uh, live the way nature intended us. Who's got good feet? Do runners have good feet? Is it I don't know enough about feet. I do wonder if um I probably ask like probably ask a podiatrist or someone. Uh, uh, who does have the best feet? Like barefoot runners? Oh, but I didn't yeah. fall off. No, you didn't. I, um, you recovered I it. it. I recovered it. I've seen you fall off. I've seen you fall off so many times. Do you remember when you rode into the back of me? Oh, that's not ideal. <laughs> and then do you remember when you were cycling uphill in the ice and you fell off? Yeah. You know what they say, if you don't fall off, you're not going fast enough. No one says that. From there. Bye. What are we doing? I don't know, dude. I'm, I'm at work. I've got people to talk to. Mark. Important? He's very important. Mark fed us all the way across America. He did. His I coat, did. if you unzip it, it's lined with velo it is. <laughs> it's just, You know, like Papa Lazarou with the taps. <laughs> Yeah, my pass now. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Everything is moving on without you. Were you wrong? Right, it's now the evening. The man hooting behind me 
We're back at bicycle for a keg of beer. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrating. It's Thursday. Hey! 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 Hey!